Good evening, everybody. It's 7 o'clock. Uh, tonight we have a special permit hearing, so we're waiting for one more board member to show up so we can uh, address a couple of other items before they do show. Uh, one is we have a public comment section at the beginning of uh, every evening, so if there's anything that anybody wants to talk about that has nothing to do with what we're supposed to talk about tonight, uh, raise your hand and come on up. Um, does anybody have anything to say about anything in general? No, that's what I thought. Okay. Um, the other item of business we have, we've got minutes of January 9th to approve. You all got those in your packet? Yep. Mm -hmm. Everybody had a chance to look at those? Uh, printed. Second. Second, John. All in favor? Okay, minutes are approved. And so closes the miscellaneous portion of our evening. Uh, even though we're short a few, a couple of members, I can go over um, the um, next. Basically, last two weeks ago, you know, we talked about the sort of the next steps in the zoning change and trying to address the moratorium for the zoning ordinances. Mm -hmm. um, I won't go into detail now, but we can come back around and we can go over some of this to make sure you think that it's going in the right direction in terms of the subdivision regulations. Because we talked about how um, we might we, we would need to sort of overhaul those and and look at. In the context of um, new streets, an urban con an urban context for new streets, I should say. So there's nothing of that sort in the current subdivision regulation. So we've um, made substantial progress in in cutting through the subdivision or uh, regulations to to um, sort of rework them. And it's sort of it really represents a whole change in how we look at streets and new road infrastructure for mm -hmm. the entire city, not just the urban core, but. Um, I wanted to show those to you as well. Okay. It's a follow-up on what we had yeah. a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Yeah, and it's sort of the next set of regulations. That was zoning, and then this is subdivision regs that sort of have to go um, so, sort of complement the zoning regulation changes. Okay. Do we need one more? We're good. No, we're good, we're good now. Okay. Um, we'll dance here, so you might want to wait for Do you have a name tag yet or no? No, we're still, it's in production. <laughs> Jen, okay, Jen's coming too. Okay. Okay, we are going to start with our one and only hearing scheduled for tonight, scheduled for 7 o'clock. It's a major site plan for construction of a two-story 6,000 plus square foot building with 11% parking reduction, site improvements, and a special permit for more than one curb cut uh, and a takeout restaurant at 100 Main Street, Florence, map ID 23A-68, as advertised on January 9th and 16th. So, uh, do we have a presentation? site engineer and Zick report the architect of the building we are here for a site plan review of a two-story commercial building to be in downtown Florence first floor is planned for retail and takeout restaurant usage and the second floor is planned for office usage the building will be built at the street with wider sidewalks on Main and Maple Street the first floor businesses will have entrances from the Main Street sidewalks the shape of the building and the brick facade will enhance the village of Florence. We are requesting planning board for a special permit to have a takeout restaurant usage. Since this is a corner partial, we are also requesting planning board for a special permit to have two curb cuts. 
two curb cuts will allow for a better circulation and will keep traffic from flowing into intersection of Maple and Main. Next to the building, we have proposed a bicycle rack, but we don't have it in this picture. But it'll be sit. It'll be right next to the sidewalk, and right next to the building. Parking will be in the rear and on the side of the building. All the zoning requirements are met. The front, si uh, the front side and the rear setbacks. The general business district requires 5% of open space. And we are planning for 13% of open space. We are requesting waiver for 8% parking reduction since we have 33 off-street parking spaces. And we are required 36. We are also requesting waiver for full traffic study of the site but well, we have provided a trip generation report for the proposed usage. This is the black and white elevation. Uh, the first half is, uh, represents the main street elevation side of the building. We're proposing two business signs, each up to 45 square feet, representing main wall sign. And in the bottom, we have the back side of the building. We're proposing 25 square feet business signs. For the both side of the building, we're proposing 25 square feet of uh, sidewall signs. At this point, I would like to uh, introduce Terry Reynolds. He'll explain the site layout. So, um, basically, as uh, uh, we, with the parking's all in the rear, and you can see it in the stripe. Stripe parking areas. There's handicap parking in the rear of the building. Two spaces, along with the handicap access. The site is fully accessible. Um, the front is accessible with a ramp and landing. Um, there's there are tree planting is required. There are two, two shade trees uh, in the lower left corner here, and centrally in the parking lot area. The remaining areas will be planted with grass. Um, down below, uh, in the rear of the parking lot, in the southern portion there, will be a dumpster enclosure. I'm uh, proposing that to be a uh, chain link with uh, red seat um, slats in it. Uh, and uh, let's see, there, there are also going to be seasonal planters uh, in Strike Island. Would be the southeast corner of the building. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be directional signs on both entrances indicating what, which businesses are where. Um, and um, there, there is also a bike rack. The bike rack that Mr. Um, Patel was talking about is in the upper right corner uh, to the right of the building mm -hmm. on, on the main street side. Mm -hmm. um, you see that? Site plan. Um, for the utilities, uh, it's a standard drainage system. We're going to utilize a drywell that's already on site. We're going to excavate it and reset it, moving it over a little bit from where it is currently. Uh, so basically, the roof runoff will be infiltrated into a drywell with an overflow that goes into a storm system. Uh, that is going to take it to a water quality uh, unit before it goes into the Maple Street storm sewer. Um, right now, all the storm water just sheet flows onto Main Street. So uh, that, that'll be a significant uh, We're going to utilize an existing sewer connection that goes into Maple Street, a uh, new six inch line that'll just tie into that. Um, otherwise, uh, the utilities, gas, electric, Electrical will go underground now, the gas will go underground and come in on the east side of the building. Uh, uh, that's basically it. Uh, the, there was a trip generation done for comparison. Um, when Cumberland Farms came before the um, planning board, they, they submitted a full traffic report, traffic study. Uh, the trip generation basically confirms that the numbers generated from this site are going to be significantly less than what Cumberland Farms was proposing, 
Cumberland Farms was not raising the level of service anywhere on the site, off the site at the intersection, and so we expect that this may be consistent and that to less than the time. That's basically it. Questions on the board? This, uh, this is a takeout restaurant proposed, first floor, not drive through restaurant. Absolutely. Okay. You have something? What about street trees? Do you need any on Main Street? Street trees aren't required if the building is at the sidewalk. Which it is. So only if it's set back further. <coughs> um, I would like to say I like the, the, the little bump out in the lower right hand corner that has two trees in it sort of entice people not to use that cut through. So I thought that was a good design feature for the parking lot. Anybody else? It's a nice plan. Um, snow removal is always an issue. I mean, you've got ev everything's parking area. Yeah. The snow storage is proposed to both the right and left side of the dumpster location there. Um, there was also some some potential for, for uh, stacking snow along the edges, and, you know, with the downtown location. Yeah. And so that's on the right-hand edge. That's grass. Yes. What do you have for sight lighting? Sight lighting. There will be four 20-foot uh, lights um, located. There are two on the lower parking lot on both the left and right side. There's one uh, up near the top to the right, and there's one uh, just off the Maple Street side. All the lighting is under five foot doorways. Um, there will be some wall stops at the doorways. But it's zero lot line. Zero lot line. Uh, no, it's not zero. That's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. It, it could be shielded, yeah, shielding. Uh, but currently, um, being that uh, it's not a residential, we can adjust that if we see. Well, I mean, I do call the picture of the pitch, but am I not? Am I That's right? That's correct, right? We want zero at the lot line. Were there light calcs done on it's the six? Yeah. It's C6. Yeah. revised lighting uh, plans because there was one fixture that was above the five foot candle allowance yeah. and, and we revised the fixtures um, but I can't say that there's zero at the and so it is um, five Carolyn five is the maximum uh, anywhere on the site typically you want zero at the property lines these are um, they get down to below one at right. the property line and given yeah. that's entirely surrounded by general business um, you know you could certainly prove that or yeah, ask I'm not for at all concerned on the streetscape side of things that's actually an advantage since it's all sidewalk and a fairly dense area um, I'm fine if if it's not a requirement for zero then I, and it is it is business behind it it, it looks residential but it is business mm -hmm. so it isn't required by the Line. It is. We require a zero foot candles at the property line. So you can either have um, required an adjustment so there's additional shielding so that when they come back with their as belts, it's showing zero. Or you can allow, you know, up to, uh, you know, half a foot candle on the ed edges of the property line. Some of the values, um, actually, I just noticed this um, rear light is four plus. It looks like just over the property line, which probably should be adjusted. I didn't catch that before. Um, but that could potentially be changed with wattage um, or shielding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. we can have mad shielding. The, they're already very, pretty low. If you if you look, the, the foot candle is generally on the side is very low. Right. It's just directly under the wall. Um, so uh, and I, I like the fixture just because it had no up. Okay. Yes, so I like that piece of it. I think maybe we'll wait and hear what the neighborhood thinks about it. I'm interested in that. Well, that was one of the staff comments was um, 
when the as built, I believe that was one of the. One of the proposed conditions was that as built be right. pr um, submitted prior to issuance of a, cer of a certificate of occupancy so that it's confirmed that they meet the ordinance. But because the ordinance says zero at the lot lines, you could also in incorporate a modification to that, you know, if it's half a foot candle or something on. Okay. On the I, side I would ask that you do allow us to have to look in because it's such a small lot. We're not going to end up with adequate lighting without some spillover. Right. right. So. Are there set out? Sorry, are there set hours that the lights would be on? Um, could leave that to you, I think these businesses are probably going to be, you know, probably like 11 o'clock, probably at night. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to go on the beyond that. Proposed usage we're using, we're going for it. Doesn't I don't see anything going overnight or anything. Mm -hmm. Given that, would you be concerned if we ask that there be no lights when business hours are not active? Sure. Mm -hmm. Just reason. Yeah. Or, or maybe even a compromise of you have your building lights. You mentioned you wanted some building mm -hmm. lights, and then we just talk about the parking lot the parking lights. Lot lights yeah, the one that you got is current. I'm assuming that the dash line is the lot line, and they don't really have an indication on the lot lines, although it looks to me like it would be substantially over one foot candle in almost all of the places near, near the fixtures themselves. Near the fixtures. Right. Right, but there are a couple of points at the property line that are um, much lower. Very yeah, but they're much farther from the light. Right. Oh, well. Saying they're lower. <coughs> I'm looking at this line. Right? Yeah. yeah. The one that's next to McDuffie's or whatever it is. The long lot line up here. Oh, McDurf. Right. So near, near the light, they're 5.5, 7.3. And then below that on the lot line, there's a 3.0. I think you're the point point nine. And here's a 6.4. Yeah, you? Yeah. You still don't have a field in the metric. Oh, uh, um, the one that we, the one that should be at the meeting, I thought that's what you were referring to. But no, there was an updated plan. You can look at this one. That's the revised. Here, oh. um, What's that? List down. Okay, so yeah. lower. Yeah. Yeah. Right under the light. Did you not get email again? I don't think so. Okay, it looks to me like the distance from here to here. All right, we'll have to figure that out. Oh, okay. I see. So look, we can have the vendor. Thanks. Justice. Shield them from the back. But, I mean, that's the only one. Also, I'd ex yeah. I would expect the photometric to show the light levels at the lot line. That this dash line is not in there. Yeah, it's how the grid worked out, but we can certainly adjust well, that I, and then make I sure. Put you some over here, then. Yep. I mean, I don't think it meets. It comes anywhere near meeting the requirements. <clears throat> so are we asking them? Add a shield along the property side. Along the yeah, not the back side doesn't concern me. Where the dumpster is is not a concern. Um, so it would be the eastern property line. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's okay. yeah the, the two fixtures on the. And then I'm. I just think it's an easy request that um, the neighborhood and the, the business operator would agree with not having the parking lot lights on. If there's no business activity, um, but I'm because of where it is in town, I wouldn't mind having the walls, the building sconces on. So I would separate those two. The site lights right. off mm -hmm. uh, an hour after a business close of business. Mm -hmm. Just one observation on that. It is directly across from a adult establishment, <laughs> so that operates much later. I would assume. So you could be creating a parking lot that is dark as opposed to a parking lot that is lit and more safe. So just from a public <laughs> standpoint, you know, you could be creating a dark spot right. across from an adult establishment. 
Um, I, you know, I would be, <laughs> I would, be yeah, I would, than a lit spot uh, particularly since the properties are, well, are related all businesses. So exactly, but yeah. I, um, I might be happy just expressing that and and leaving that to, to good business sense. What, what do you mean by an adult establishment? I mean, it serves alcoholic beverages and oh. has an age limit <laughs> for adults. <laughs> Not the other. Way. Nothing more. Nothing less. <laughs> That specifically defined in right. the ordinance. <laughs> 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 oh, I actually thought I was talking about another building. I know what yeah. Yeah. Okay. What did that you one. think? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, where do we end up with that then? Um, shields on the eastern property line still, and and just a, a stated interest. I think it. Well, you all can vote on whether or not you think that condition is appropriate for turning the lights off after the act. Mm. The, the solution to the, the hot spots is to have them put in more. Just more jiggle fixtures. the cord. <laughs> Plug in the cord. Kick it. Might be on that end. John, can you just. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Nope. Yeah, yes, no, maybe. You can't keep on holding this, though. It's usually because somebody has his hand on the uh, space bar. Is the intent to leave the building wall sconces on at night for safety reasons or? Security. Just security. So if the parking lot's lights were to go off at midnight, is the intent to leave the building lights themselves on the building still illuminated throughout the night. We could certainly do that, not a problem. Let's give us all a seizure here. I know. Anything um, <coughs> else from the board? Just, oh, yeah. Um, I just want to make the it's it's really great the building is up to the street but then there's this pretty big parking lot that's right on the street also does that meet the requirement of the zoning um the parking it's it's really the driveway access is on the side i think the fact that you know you obviously have to deal with the fact that it's a corner lot so there are two driveway entrances the parking on that are you talking about the maple street side Huh. No, the main, no, street, main street. Main street side. Um, the requirement is that the parking start, you know, the, the building facade, the horizontal plane essentially um, comes across. So the parking actually is at that or just beyond that. Um, but there's no other way. I mean, you know, you're, you're dealing with a corner building, so you're going to have parking. When you have parking on the side of a building, there will be parking. Um, you know, on one street frontage, essentially. You could address that by additional landscaping, essentially, but it's not that big of a gap to the next building. And part, most of it is as driveway access. But the parking actually stop, starts behind well, that horizontal. Building. I would say less than half of it is the driveway, but, and there's no landscaping whatsoever that I can see. Okay. Um, and it seems to me that it's a big gap, and I don't see how that this, if you just went like that, it's just like any other building on any other street. It's not because it's on the corner. I mean, I'm not arguing about you don't need a driveway, but I'm, but you, you really are looking at the whole parking lot. I mean, if you look across there, there's parking. Just saying. Right. So the requirement is you can't have parking in front of the building. Right. So. If you draw that horizontal plane, the parking is actually behind that plane. I definitely would like to see some kind of landscaping there. Is there any intent on those two islands? One has a bike rack, but across from that, uh, when you go out on the main street on the right-hand side, that island, what's happening there? Is it just grass? Certainly just grass. Carolyn, do the two trees meet the requirement? You need one for 15 parking spaces, so two is, is all they would need for this site. I 
as far as plantings, I mean, the, the opportunity for plantings is limited. There is that space down in the front. That's what I was talking about. Well, and I called them trees a minute ago, but what they are actually are on that sort of blocking corner island are seasonal planter tubs. I thought they were trees. No, the trees are back further. Yeah, the kusa and the... <laughs> the preference to be to have another tree at that island moving on to uh, Main Street? Well, there's a space also on Maple Street, the same kind of space and that's up there on the far east side of uh, Maple Street. It's adjacent to the building? Yeah, that was adjacent to the building. Yeah. You know what I'm thinking? Because it is on the sidewalk there, um, possibly landscaping in, in lower instead of going after a tree that's going to come and extend like that. Just something. Something like we've got along King Street where we've just landscaped right up to the sidewalk. So some bushes or... We've also clustered trees um, coming in and out of, I think, of the, the Taco Bell that we did where they, they took the trees off the front because they didn't want to obstruct the sign, but they put them at the entrance and the exit, similar to this. Um, we have a lot of room here, obviously, but it's something. Right. It's not. Well, I mean, I, it's clear what we're trying to do. We're trying to hide the parking lot. Is that, I mean, that's what this discussion is about. I think the, um, the only issue or concern would be that if you have something lower, you don't want to obstruct the site distance as a vehicle coming out if there are pedestrians on the sidewalk. You want to be able to see yeah. them. Yeah. So um, if you did go with, you, it'd point. really have to be to the edge of that um, mm -hmm. property line. The, the space that's available to the east of the stop sign there, the stop, the space where it says stop, is about 10 by 20 feet. But I, I agree that it shouldn't be high stuff that blocks the vision, so. Well, and, and I mean, if you just left it the way it is, I mean, it's not out of character with, you know, the medical, you know, valley medical or even foreign savings or, you know, I mean, or foreign, I mean, it's not out of the, the norm where there's a driveway and you see cars parked in Florence. I mean, if you drive down Main Street, that's what you see. So it won't be any better, but it won't be any worse than what you would see anyway. Uh, to me, it's comparable to what we've done on King Street where we've asked for trees. I mean, I'd rather go high and get it so it's not. Mm -hmm. Well, that's an idea. Yeah, that's the other possibility. Right. Yeah. Sure. I think there's room for a tree myself. 20-foot expanse is a, it's not a yeah. small space. On, on Main Street, uh, the abutting property has a big sign right there that a tree would block. The trunk of the tree would block. Uh, I don't know. How tall is that? Pretty high. Yeah. They say he's pretty high. It would be a consideration, whatever you think about that. Any other um, comments from the board before we open it up? Okay, uh, we're going to open it up to public comment. Anybody who wishes to speak about this project, just raise your hand um, and then come on up and, we'll, and give us your name and your address. And let's hear what you have to say. So, anybody who has something to speak, just raise your hand. Gary. Uh, my name is Gary Warden. I've been and lived in Florence for 40-something years, and I'd like to thank Mr. Patel for putting such a nice building, you know, proposing such a nice building for Florence. That gas station has well, been working since he bought it, working on putting up something out. So um, I think a lot of people will be happy if you approve this and, and move on. Thank you. Anybody else? Yep. Jody Nishman. I'm a general partner in um, 92 Main Street. We own the second floor as a condo, and that's right next door. We, we are the abutters to the east, and uh, I think it's a great proposal. I'm strongly in favor of it. I, I do have a concern about uh, anything that would hi hide that sign. That's basically our property that you were talking about. 
But other than that, uh, I think it's a great proposal. I'm blanking on the sign. Can you describe it to me? Yeah, it's basically uh, just back from the sidewalk, and it's perpendicular to the line of the travel on the street. And is it about eight feet high, no. Mike? Something like that? Yes, eight, nine, nine, ten. Not, okay. And, and it's, it's green with white lettering, and there are a bunch of probably about this high, what, six feet wide? signs that yeah. basically identify all the different people that are in the building, all the different businesses. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I just also want to say that uh, as a business there, um, if anything, I like the idea of lights being on, again, because of the, the concern. Was that you that raised it about the establishment across the street and security? So. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yep. Hi, my name is Michael Gormley. I own the downstairs of 92 Main. Uh, it's an office condominium. Uh, one little point that I just wanted to make is, as far as lighting, is we were requested years ago to put a very large spotlight on our whole back lot, which will take and cover quite a bit of theirs anyways. So as far as lighting, uh, we're 24 hours a day back there, mm -hmm. uh, there as a request because visiting nurses used to be tenants and they come in all night long and we just never changed it. Uh, we tried the ones that work with the, with the sun and uh, dark, but that doesn't work that well. So we're 24 hours. So as far as your lighting and maybe a restriction on theirs in the backyard, uh, we're lit up anyways, which affects them. So yeah. But uh, we're so much uh, in favor of what's going on. And uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Uh, Phil Sullivan, Northampton. Uh, I spent a lot of time in Florence as a kid growing up there in the old West Clothing and uh, Burgett's gas station. Spent a lot of time there. Uh, this is certainly a project that uh, deserves uh, reviewing quite well and a favorable outcome. Uh, it's going to create a, a much nicer presence up there than a vacant lot that's really been falling apart over the years. It's an eyesore. A lot of people just pull in there and park. Uh, I think this is one of the best things that's happened to the center of Florence in a long time. So I ask you to approve it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Catherine Petricelli. I'm on Oak Street in Florence, um, right down from the center. So I don't actually even know if this is within the jurisdiction of this council, but I'd just be curious to ask um, the if there's variation in the um, size of the spaces within the building, um, because um, depending on what you know what's there and it, what what kind of hopefully unique, wonderful <laughs> retail things go into the bottom of that. I mean, it's obviously going to affect the character of Florence for a really long time to come. Um, you know, so I, I feel like this is a really big decision uh, to make. But I, I, I just you know, wanted to ask about um, you know, plans for occupants or at least different, you know, if there's variation in the size of the That, of that the wouldn't be so places. much the questions for the board. When that's really not our purview as far as within the footprint of the building what's going to happen on either side mm -hmm. but and what about um, what about in terms of um, um, footpaths or benches or anything like that on the exterior on the exterior that's that is within our purview and things like uh, landscaping you heard us talking about that and bike racks and things like that so certainly that's right so I just want to throw into the into the ring um, you know that it would be I believe um, a, a huge benefit to have you know benches, footpaths, um, and those kinds of things, so that it wasn't just a drive-in and drive-out center. Mm -hmm. Thanks. OK, thank you. Yep. Hi, I'm Robert Ross, and I live in downtown Florence, uh, 40 uh, Kai Street. Um, and for the most part, I'm in favor of this project, but I do have some concerns. One of them being the uh, reduction in parking requirement, which also 
not only is there, are they asking for a reduction for parking, which is uh, something important in downtown Florence. Looking ahead, uh, we have no municipal parking in Florence besides on-street parking. So a building, a business having parking is very important in Florence. Um, and, that, and, the, and at the same time, there's not adequate uh, snow storage on the site, which does trouble me in the winter. We have, we've had light snow this winter, but we've had other winters where it's pretty heavy. There's been pretty heavy snow, and I would hope there'd be a, some sort of a recommendation or accommodation for trucking snow out if that, if that need, need be to happen. Mm -hmm. um, my other concern is that they're asking for um, a takeout restaurant, which we don't know what it is and what the demand might be, uh, depending on the company or the chain or the size of the investment or the, the way that business does their business could greatly impact uh, what might happen in the structure. And I think that's kind of opening a Pandora's box to get that blank uh, approval without really knowing what we're going to get. Um, I really think that it should be retail space, and that could be a restaurant in the future if the, if the right restaurant presented itself, but we're not sure that's what we're uh, granting here. Um, the building was originally planned without a front door when I first saw the plans, and I think the front door was kind of a afterthought in this building. It doesn't really have storefront per se. There's a ramp thrown on the front of it. Maybe it shouldn't be or doesn't need to be there if the building was at a, at a different um, elevation. Um, I know that that seems to be the common thread because you're, using, you're working with a built, an existing building and you're trying to make it meet the sidewalk, but we have an opportunity to put this building at grade you might not have to have a ramp on the front of the building, which kind of inhibits uh, pedestrian traffic because you're forced to, to use that, that ramp. It doesn't have the same open uh, experience that you'd have with a, a building at grade. And as far as the light goes, um, I can't speak for anybody, but there is residential um, tenants directly across from the building in everybody's market block and at the back entrance to the Parsons block. So those should be taken into consideration. It is mostly commercial in the back, but you, it was noted that there's an adult establishment to the front of the building. There's also residential on the same side. Um, it should be considered. Thank you very much. Thank you. Caleb Langer, I live in Florence. Um, overall, I, I just want to say I think it's a, a great project, um, certainly for a, a village center, uh, a vacant lot, or a, a gas station are two of the worst things that you can have right at the main crossroads there. Um, and I think that there's a lot that this project does to enhance the, the, the center of Florence. Um, I think it's it'll be one of the four most important buildings in kind of defining the way people see downtown Florence. Um, two comments, uh, actually both relating to, to the last gentleman who spoke um, and ongoing themes. Uh, in terms of parking, um, I think that Florence Center is a place that uh, is quite accessible by uh, a number of means other than by car. Um, it's certainly accessible by bicycle with the with the bike trail um, and coming up from the downtown by Elm Street. Um, and it's walkable for a, a lot of us uh, right near the center. And of course, there's the bus lines that run there. Um, with that in mind, and uh, given the fact that any amount of parking there, um, you, you're basically taking away from the streetscape there. I, I realize that parking is a necessity. Um, but I think as uh, multiple people have acknowledged, um, any amount of parking is, is detracting from that somewhat. Um, so I appreciate the, the thoughts that people had uh, in terms of that. Um, but uh, I, I do support a, a waiver from the, the minimum parking uh, because uh, I, I think that there are other ways that it's accessible and I think that it's important not to try to overwhelm a, a very critical part of the streetscape in Florence 
uh, by overwhelming it with parking. Um, and then I just wanted to echo the, the last gentleman's comments uh, about the pedestrian permeability at the sidewalk. Um, I had had the same thought about the, the ramp there, about the entrances there, um, and how uh, they relate to the street. Um, and if you compare it to the, the Parsons block across the street, um, while I do appreciate that it, it does kind of take some architectural cues from it, um, it doesn't feel nearly as engaging as the, the Parsons block uh, from a pedestrian perspective. Uh, you have uh, across the street, you have uh, big storefront windows, you have multiple entrances, even sometimes more than one entrance per business, which doesn't have to be used, but depending on, you know, obviously that building has been there for a very long time. Um, and I think that having that flexibility and just the, the feeling that you're not walking along a, a, a blank building front. I realize that there are windows there, um, but from a pedestrian perspective, it, it feels that you're walking along a blank wall um, when there's no way into that building there. And given the location of that building, uh, I, I just like to echo those comments about accessibility and building. Thank you. Hi, I'm Steve Shea for the Timothy E. Shea Trust, which owns the Parsons Block, uh, directly across. Um, Greg's been our tenant for many years, and I know he's been working on this project very hard. Um, I think it's basically a good project. Um, I, I do have some concerns. Uh, one is directly for my um, residential tenants which are uh, on the second floor of that block. And that would be having to do with the lighting in the parking lot. Uh, it's probably a business decision as to how much lighting there is in the parking lot and, a, and an insurance decision. But uh, I just ask that there be common sense there. Um, particularly after 11 o'clock, I don't know what the hours of the businesses in question are. but. So there's not excessive stray light. Um, the parking issue, um, I'm not sure how much of a variance they're asking for. How much are you asking for? 8%. Yeah. Um, I'm agnostic on that because as it is, the parking is undefined. So however many spaces they have lined out is a lot more than effective parking than is now when people just drive in and they just kind of park 10 feet away from each other. Um, however, I, I think uh, Robert Ross made a good point about the snow removal. Um, we, we do uh, need parking in Florence. And uh, I like the plan because it does provide parking, even if it's a uh, slightly less than maybe what the zoning asks for. Um, but if for the entire winter, four lots are, are um, being used to hold a snow bank, that cuts down from that. So I, I think uh, perhaps a consideration for s snow removal from the property would be worth considering. So those are my comments. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, my name is Jody Nicholas. I live at 28 Kai's. Um, my question is, or statement is basically what a couple other people said, where um, it looks to me as just on this the photo that was up that the building is very close to the street and the sidewalk is very small. Um, I don't know if that's how it is really going to be, but it seems to me to keep within what the rest of Florence looks like. There's an ample sidewalk, it seems like, on the Parsons block and on the block across the street. 
And this seems to me like just it varies from that. So I think if I might be wrong, I'm not sure, but um, just seems like it's maybe just too close to the street um, to fit in with the character of the rest of downtown. The, the building's right on the sidewalk, intentionally so, but the sidewalk is, is a deep one. It's, is it? So is that similar to the other blocks? Oh, okay. Could we get the picture back up of the facade? Is that? I don't know. It's the MIS problem. <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, I can try, but there's no well, guarantee. And I think that was a, if I remember your staff notes, that the sidewalk was first proposed as narrower and was yeah. increased at an increase. Yeah, it's been increased. Yeah. Is, is the existing sidewalk going to be uh, demolished and replaced with the curb cut where it's crowned? Okay, everything in front is new concrete sidewalk with granite curbing. Mm -hmm. They're going to pull the current granite curbing and hold it and put it back down again. Are you going to reuse the what granite curbing you can? Well, the granite curbing that doesn't need to be pulled up will be left. Where they're being relocated will be adjusted accordingly and reused. So, is there a reason why the building could be put Sir, sir. Question should be to the board. Not it's not a conversation back and forth. So. Yep. Speak. Yep. Uh, my name is Siegfried Porth. I live on 20 Sterling Road, Florence, and I'm also the architect for the project. So to address the issues of the ramp, you have to go to the ADA. Okay. The ADA clearly states that all entrances shall be accessible. Period. The end. So the back is accessible. And the only way to make the front accessible and keep the parking and the grading and everything working, we have to put in a ramp. And it's about 16 inches tall, so it's about 16 feet long. And I think that's where pretty much where we are mm -hmm. with a set of steps. Like, if we could get away with it and get a variance, but that's not, we can't do it. When I did fly by night downtown, we did the same thing. We had a nice front entrance, but on the side we put the ramp. That's not allowed today. We would have had to put a ramp to the front. If that was an entrance that would have had to have a ramp today. So that's why we pushed the building back an additional five feet just so we could get the ramp. And other than that, it's, I, every time I turn the corner, I don't see anything else but my building. Mm -hmm. So thank you. I asked a question about whether the building could be recited so that there could be not, not be a ramp in the front. I understand that ADA rules make that you have to have a ramp if the building's too high, but I would like, like to, I was wondering if the building could be lowered so that the ramp could be in the back instead of in the front of the, the property, which might be, might look better, might be more appeasing to the neighbors. Um, and while I'm back up here, I would like to address the trees. That the trees are not substantial shade trees; they're just dogwoods. And I don't know why that is, or if there's a uh, if there's a requirement for shade trees. It would be great to see a shade tree on that front parcel where there is no tree at all. Um, but there's no, no plantings planned for. I mean, and I do f I do worry that the building might be offensively close to the street because of the the scale of the building and. Just, I'm not sure because we're, we're looking at two set different sets of drawings. The drawing that was submitted with the plan is, is, is different from the, the rendering that we see on the board. So I'm really not quite sure what we're buying here, to tell you the truth. Goggins. I own a business in, in Florence and I'm here to speak in, 
behalf of uh, the proposal you have before you tonight. <clears throat> and I think that the, uh, a couple of things need to be taken into consideration um, with respect to the facade question in the front and, and the issue of, uh, of a ramp versus uh, no ramp and the elevational challenges that come in with respect to the site and the cost that would be attributed to uh, mitigating that, I think you need to keep in mind uh, that it, this building uh, will certainly be a handsome addition to the center of Florence, but as the costs of construction for this building increase, it's important to consider that uh, it really costs uh, no more to build this building in Florence than it costs to build a building in the center of Northampton. Yet the rents that the developer is going to be able to uh, try to achieve are roughly a third of what the rents are in the uh, center of Northampton. So as you respond to concerns that have been raised about wouldn't it be nice to do this and wouldn't it be nice to do that, I think there's a number of things that need to be kept in context as you're, you're weighing those things. It would be nice to do a lot of things differently, no doubt. And it probably could look better, but I think it looks wonderful. I think the building is going to fit very nicely. And I think that the architect uh, has done a, a very good job of dealing with the challenges of putting such a building in such a spot. I've been cautioning Garang for some time to be concerned about what the eventual cost of this building might be because there's a point of diminishing returns. It's no, there uh, should be no surprise that that lot has sat uh, vacant for so long because if it was simple and easy, it would have been done by now. The fact of the matter is that it hasn't because there's challenges in building and challenges in filling, filling buildings that are all related to things over which you have some control as a body as you contemplate these important uh, positions that have been taken by others, but really eventually result in some additional dollars needing to be spent. And uh, I wanted to see if I couldn't provide some context for that. Thanks very much. Anybody else? My name is Mike Flynn. I live at 983 Florence Road. I've uh, been a barber for 52 years. I've had my barber shop in Florence for 40 years. My knowledge of architecture is about the same as my knowledge of brain surgery, so I'm not going to talk about that. I would like to talk about the Patel family in general. Um, I've known them since they've come to town. They've taken over the bird store. They're members of the Florence Civic and Business Association. They're good members. They get active in everything we do. Um, they're an asset to Florence. I uh, hope you approve their plan, and I think that will also be an asset to Florence. Thanks very much. I just want to say um, really quickly, and this isn't meant as any, uh, really as even a condemnation or anything of the plan, but I feel like, um, of course it's true that something is better than a, than a vacant lot, but I still just, um, you know, urge a lot of care on whatever details that you're looking at, because, because a building is better than, than a vacant lot doesn't mean that that building is the one that you should pick. Um, and I, I, I just am feeling very outnumbered <laughs> by the business owners here. But, um, you know, I've got a two-year-old and an eight-year-old. You know, we're here for the long haul. You know, I have not lived in Florence for 40 or 50 or 60 years. Um, but, you know, maybe I will. Um, thanks. Thank you. Questions? Comments from the board? Can I Close. ask Mr. Patel a question? We should close the public no. hearing yet. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I just wanted to ask a question because um, it's come up a couple times. 
is there some distinction to the description of a takeout restaurant <laughs> versus a restaurant versus a takeout? It seems to be a little bit of an oxymoron, and I'm just trying to understand what does that distinction mean? Does it mean it's only takeout, or it's takeout and eat in, or it's? I think it's takeout and eating it would okay. be a better option. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. I just want to make sure I understood what it was. It's got 17 places. Okay. Did you have something for me? Well, I, I just wanted to point out to the woman that spoke earlier that we don't really get to choose and say we want the best possible building for that. I mean, we can say that, but as long as a building is proposed that meets the current zoning and, and other requirements, then we don't really have any choice but to approve it. No, if we have a description like that, too, yeah. the only break place is Do you have something? No. Um, drive through. No, I, I'm oh, relieved. God, I think we got to pull it on. Previous proposal, and I'm so glad that we have this building that seems to be done in the flavor of a downtown village building. And so, um, I want the I want the business in this building to succeed. So that's I'm, I'm happy with the proposal. I mean, I, I, my take is I don't I don't think we dodged a bullet. I think we intentionally well, we, you know, <laughs> we, we knocked it down because right. we it, we didn't as a board we didn't feel what's come before us in the past have have met the requirements that regulations aside that fit what wants to be there in the center of Florence. And I think this goes a long way to doing that. I agree. So. Okay, any other comments? Public comment is still open. I have a, there were a couple of comments from DPW. I don't know if you want them now. Yeah. Or, um, so they're really minor technical details. I just want to see final construction documents a couple of weeks before the um, building permit is requested so that they can make sure all the details of the connections and everything are, are um, on the final plans. And um, then they had also um, requested that as part of that the plans include um, show details for the storm drain protection and um, details of the handicap. Um, ramp for the sidewalk, just the ADA accessible ramp down to the crosswalks. Um, and that was it from their perspective. Otherwise, I think as you saw in the um, memos back from the applicant that they had really addressed all the comments from staff mm -hmm. the first go around. Yeah, I, I, do I understand properly that the ramp cuts the sidewalk down to five feet, essentially? Yeah, I mean that's okay. I, it the looks like it's ramp. five feet. Yeah, does that? I mean, I just want to make sure everybody. No, I don't. The sidewalk stayed the same. We moved the building back to have room for those for the ramp. Well, there's a ten and a half foot depth between the, the face of the building and the and the curb. Right. right. It's five feet of sidewalk, five feet. Of it was ramp. the original sidewalk, so we right. moved it back to accommodate the side the ramp. The sidewalk hasn't changed though. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The sidewalk on the Maple Street side is looks like it's ten feet. Yes. Is that existing? Yes. Anybody else? Yeah. Sir? Yes. Okay. I guess I'm not clear. Uh, maybe I, if I had talked to Graham in the past couple of weeks, which I haven't, I, I might have asked this question. But as far as the sidewalk, the, the sidewalk may be the same, but the effect of walking width has been reduced. And um, this all may be very well within the zoning. So, but I'm just making the comment. Um, um, for us, made the comment about the ramp in the back. I kind of have that question in my mind also, and I would have asked you earlier. Yeah. But, um, I'm not sure that this also gets at why the building isn't that great. So I don't know if any, if some of these are are not questions that. Uh, he, that That's not so much a question yeah. for us to answer, is okay. more the developer. So. Okay. 
as far as why the building isn't that great. I'm sure if, if it But it's okay been, in terms of the zoning yes. for it to be not yes. great. Okay. Um, so we're limited to a certain extent as to what okay. we can um, um, approve or not approve. Thank you. Anybody else? But it, yeah, it, just, it seems to me on some previous <coughs> projects at the church and, and Cole Morgan that we demanded a lot more landscaping on the parking lot. This is just a big mess of asphalt. I would, I would say the difference between a place like Cole Morgan and this is that's a massive parking lot with hundreds of spaces. Yeah. And... Um, the requirement is that there's one tree per. So once you hit a certain threshold of parking, there are more landscaping requirements in the zoning um, that are triggered. What is the threshold? Um, 75 spaces. Um, then you have to break up your parking with islands that are landscaped. Okay. And so 15 between, basically over five spaces, you have a requirement of certain things. And then after 15 spaces, you have to have one tree per 15 space. And then... Um, 75 is the next threshold. And how many spaces are in here altogether? 33. 33. 33. And, and in addition on King Street, you've got the street, the parking lot, and then the building. Here we've got you know, the parking lot. It's mm -hmm. behind. Well, I just wanted, I wanted to clarify what. I'm in favor of the planting plan as submitted. I mean, it's, it meets zoning requirements, and it's a small parking lot. Um, the thought to add something at the uh, at the end of the street sounds like it'll interfere with with existing sign building directories. I don't think you're going to gain that much from a small, you know, diameter tree in that spot. It's a parking lot, um, and I think I think the planting plan is sufficient. Yeah, but you're an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, again, it's certainly not out of character with <laughs> all the other parking lots along the street. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. really looking different. Mm -hmm. it's, it's At the same time, we've... Except there's trees. trees. Right. It's going to look a lot different yeah. from, uh, from Valley Medical Group. I don't, not, not from somebody that drives it four or five times a day. <laughs> not to me. I don't think it will. We've made an effort, a considerable yeah. effort on, on the development of King Street for all those new parcels for landscaping, trees, benches and so forth and so you know maybe if a tree is going to block the sign and low shrubs will block traffic maybe a bench in that location would would be better than grass or something I don't, I don't know um, but we've made the effort in other places I don't think we should just because it's better than what's there not any worse than what's there um, we should necessarily just turn away from that the opportunity but I don't like if you should put a burden on the owner either no so but I don't know that a bench is an owner it's a burden we could drive out we'll drive out there <laughs> later and see how the valid medical group is set the parking spaces are set way back from the street compared to this mm -hmm. there's no place I mean if you're going to have this building in that spot with the amount of of compatibility with what's around it you're not going to be able to have enough parking places if you set them all that way back I mean there there's a dilemma there is what's I'm not saying we should do that I'm saying that it's a dilemma that's all yeah. I'm saying John misrepresenting yeah. I have a question in the uh, in the proposal it says three and in Terry's presentation it said four Before. spaces were being asked for uh, for a waiver Right, so I think oh. there's, uh, I mean, uh, from a staff level, I calculated four, they calculated three, it's a matter of one space. I think I would technically s say that it's 11% reduction and it's four spaces, um, but I'm not sure that really makes a difference. You've got, you know, alternating uses that might have different demands, um, so, and, and you're, uh, as one, someone pointed out, this is accessible on foot and bicycle, so there are multiple ways people can get to this property that would reduce the demand for parking. But I think the other thing to potentially consider is, you know, you could have a condition that says <coughs> snow has to be removed on site to ensure that all the parking spaces that are there are available throughout the year mm -hmm. um, to address a concern of further reduction of parking.
Okay, public comment still open. Do you want to leave it open or make a motion? Leave that one here. Yep. <laughs> I ask because it didn't come up, but part of their special permit is for two curb cuts, and I don't know how that impacts or doesn't impact a project like this, and why it <coughs> hasn't been addressed in this meeting. I'm, I'm only curious to why it's part of the special permit, but yet. Lot line and this building is, but only because of the way that it's designed that they have two curb cuts, the building could have been skinnier and longer, and there would be no parking visible to the main street uh, streetscape. So, so better feel. I'm, so you, I'm just okay. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm not you, here to break the bank. I'm not. I'm, not, it's not a, I'm against it. I'm opposed to it. I'm. 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 I'm positive for downtown Florence. I'm here to make sure that we get the best possible outcome for downtown Florence. I have nothing against Mr. Patel. I think in, in concept, a Victorian building on the street is what we want and desire for downtown Florence. I just want to make sure that we, that we don't fall into the, the, it's better than a parking lot or a bladed uh, site mindset. Forget about that. It's that way because it's that way. It's not that way that it has to be that way. And it's not that it can't be a better, it can't be a better project by a little bit of pushing and making it a better project. Um, and I know that it all costs money, and I know that rents are probably half of what they are in downtown North Tampa, yeah, not a third. And I also know that to buy the property in the, in the forefront is cheaper than buying property in downtown North Tampa. So you have that gain too. Um, but I, I really am not trying to bust the bank here. I just am trying to um, ensure that we get the best project for downtown Florence. Thank you. There were comments on the curb cut by staff. Yeah. So the, the ordinance um, requires that uh, there are a maximum of one curb cut per lot in the central business, general business, and EB and highway business district. Um, and so a special permit is required for more than one curb cut. And the planning board can only grant a uh, second curb cut if the applicant can show that there's something unique about the property that would otherwise render flow to and from the property unsafe and unmanageable. And I think given that this is a corner lot and you've got major traffic on both um, um, sides, Main Street and Maple Street, that um, this um, having access from both um, sides of the lot or, or the two faces of the lot um, minimizes the potential vehicular conflicts that would or could otherwise occur both vehicular on vehicular but also pedestrian and vehicular conflicts if you're trying to cross or make turning movements that might be unsafe to get into a site with just one access that's on a major corner like that. so that that would be sort of the the way that i would <coughs> suggest that you all look at that special permit criteria but that's the that's the allowance that the board has been granted in, in the zoning to allow for a secondary curb cut a lot. And then within that recommendation, the um, or that mindset, the recommendation was for both entrances. The curb cuts for both entrances may not exceed 24 feet. Right, which is the standard for commercial district driveways is 24 foot width. 26, um, They should have modified that, but that was that's why the condition is there, that they don't exceed 24 feet. You're really talking a lot about the left hand turn out onto Main Street, particularly. Right, so and close, also. Which would be so close to the light that there would be. Right, problems. conflicts that way, and mm -hmm. right. And also coming into the site, making left hand turns not at the signal as mm -hmm. opposed to at the signal. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second, and all in favor? Opposed. Frandy opposed. Okay. Okay. So the public hearing uh, portion uh, has ended. Um, so no more comments from the public, but uh, we still have discussion internally. Um, I think. I think this project has a lot going for it. I think uh, again, this is what we've been kind of waiting for for the center of Florence, and this is what wants something like this wants to be there. Um, and I think I was at the technical review and they've modified. We had some comments initially with the initial design, 
those every comment had has been addressed uh, and I think the applicant has has put a good faith effort in, in addressing all of those issues it's a funky lot it's on the corner it's 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 hard to deal with in many ways with the elevation and so forth um, but to me uh, other than the conditions that we've, we've discussed I think this is as close to home run as, as we can get any other comments do we want to go over it, Franny? Well, I wanted to uh, look. The zoning permit application said renovate existing building. Do they think they meant remove? Well, that was the earlier um, iteration of it. So their, their zoning permit it triggers the review. And so as they move forward in the process and redesigned, it's no longer That's the same. Many, so. How come there's so many different additions in this one? <laughs> so many amendments and everything. It's a little confusing. I'm in favor of granting the second permit, the second um, curb cut. Mm -hmm. and, but I think that we ought to hang tough on the lighting requirements. Zero at the property line. Yeah, or close to, I mean, I, I don't mind maybe up to one foot candle or something like that, but I think it's, it's too much now. We don't actually don't have a definitive uh, light plan. I would just just for general public information the the lighting standards that in the zoning require full cutoff so you know you're going to have light poles where the light is not going to there's not going to be up lighting to a second or third floor you know across the street you're not going to be able to see that um, probably um, and the light levels are much lower than you might see that are in non-compliant light fixtures around a good part of the city but every time a new project comes in the new light standards apply and so those levels are going to be a lot lower than um, what you see out there now um, so so the, the comments we had on the lighting were we had a few um, to put shields on the eastern property line to have the lights off at the close of building or plus an hour after the close of building, but then we had discussion about whether or not that's a good thing. To keep the building wall packs on throughout the night. And, and shut the parking lot lights, lights off. Yeah. Right. I right. thought that was a, made sense yeah. Yeah. With, given various concerns that people stated. Mm -hmm. Caroline, you're saying that, that for people who are residing in apartments up, there's already, the lights are all down, so right. that would not be right except the, the concept of more or less ambient light that's just out there right right it depends on how high the how high the light packs yeah. are in the building too these are 20 feet yeah um I, since i started that discussion about the lighting i i i have two thoughts one is um we're hearing a lot of support for a, a business that is a known entity in the village and um, I think the operator of the building has the same incentive that we do. You don't want to waste electricity or for, for a time when it's not needed. So I'm kind of wanting to back down off that partly after I, I agree with John um, and not make that a requirement, but state it as, a, as a, a concern of the property and leave it up to good management to handle that. Specific to the parking lot lights specific to the parking lot not the wall packs on the building right well i, I mean I, I think that would be allowed to have such lights as are necessary for security i don't know whether saying they have to keep keep all the light packs on or not is necessary that's we could, just we could say what do we do at atwood mind is restating what i'm saying is you know yeah. we're, we're saying use your good sense to do you want me to disagree with you no. <laughs> <laughs> Your tone sounds like you are, whether you do or not. Yeah, it always sounds like that. <laughs> um, Atwood Drive, we had a similar situation, right, where the, the parking lot lights were off plus an hour or two after mm -hmm. close of right. building, yeah, but the ball pack stayed on all night. Mm -hmm. And those were washes on the building about right. like I expected this mm -hmm. to be. Right. Mm -hmm. So what I'm suggesting is that I've talked myself out of that condition. <laughs> I'm full circle. Mm -hmm. I have. So we'd leave the lighting, the parking lot lights, up to the discretion of the owner, as long as we have shields on the eastern end and the 
uh, lights at the property are, are minus a half foot candle, one foot candle. We can adjust on zero. I don't really think it's attainable. Yeah, I think under one. I mean, the only it spiked at each light location. After that, right. uh, or the revised one. After that, it was well. That's why pretty I think the shielding will handle that. Well, you could say a maximum of not to exceed one foot candle. Right. Oh, I go along with that. Mm -hmm. And staff recommendations were prior to issuance of a certificate of occupancy, the applicant shall submit as built of the site lighting stamp by a qualified engineer indicating compliance with the zoning. In this case, it would be compliance with the condition. Um, condition. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have a condition. And, and then, um, so then the curb cuts for 24 feet, and then, but strike the site lighting off. Oh, delete that one. Mm -hmm. um, okay. What about the snow storage? Uh, I mean, snow removal as necessary to ensure that all parking spaces are available through the winter? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I think that's good as a condition for granting the reduction in yeah. parking. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, DPW um, conditions, um, final construction plans submitted for review at least two weeks prior to the building permit. Mm -hmm with revised plans showing storm drain protection measures and the sidewalk uh, ramp details. And that's all the notes I have for possible conditions. Did you have any? The only other thing I had is um, landscaping. Do we want to do anything? Oh, right. Planting benches, we trees? Did just, I mean, the benches sounding appealing is the only alternative that might work in that front main street piece you've got that and then on Maple Street too there's a little spot right next to um, mm -hmm. kind of the same size same yeah I mean we've done that That's on a King. Good idea. I, I think at King Street what we did there and we made mm -hmm. you know by by itself those individual projects with a lone bench you know didn't look like much but now you step mm -hmm. back and more projects are being mm -hmm. developed it's starting to have some continuity mm -hmm. and it's in downtown I mean it's it's a nice yeah. place to right have right mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, we again have the possibility of blocking the view of people driving in or out. We want to make sure they don't block the visibility. You got in that instance, you got a 20-foot space. Yeah, that's plenty of space for a bench. Well, I, we could just make it part of the condition. Yeah. At both driveway entrances. I would say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Both sides. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's a nice compromise. That's all I had. You want a motion? I want a motion. I, I move that we approve the major site plan for construction of a two story, 6,000 plus square foot building, 11% parking reduction, site improvements, special permit, more than one curb cut, and takeout restaurant, 100 Main Street, Florence, map ID 23A 68, with the conditions that we just discussed. Second. I'll give it to John. Yeah. <laughs> All in favor? Good to go. Thank you. Up, there was Jen and Dan, and then I couldn't figure out. Yeah, right. Oh yeah. So it's really, well, it's going to be it's going to be a nice uh, match with the building across the street. That'd be a great. <laughs> well, but it'll match. It'll match. You know, that side will match. The other side will be a little. You know, so. It's not bad. It'll be a nice, it'll be a nice, nice plan. But, right? But I had to sign up with, with Box. I didn't want to. Oh, good. I didn't know what that was. Like, I had trouble with the cloud, and so I couldn't open it. Okay. So the whole time I thought I, I had access to the. So there may be, there's a glitch also in our online access. It says. 
Good question. Enter your password. You can just hit enter. Okay. All right. But I'll stay on top of it next time. Do you want to get rid of those for you? Yeah, here. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Wait a minute. Is there recycling? Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. I am having one of those after. Hi, I'm Heather. How are you? Mike. Yeah. 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 And you missed her for what? For what I said. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I stick by my decision. Yeah, well, I get that. <laughs> it was tough. It was a hard decision. But Sarah had a great time. She really, really enjoyed it. Well, so. this is good. And as we yeah. modify the zoning, oh. that's, that's being clarified yeah. in all the commercial yeah. districts. That there's no real special yeah. permit need to. I love that house. Too bad that take out for say is really there's a drive through window. Yeah. So that's the modification oh. that's going through. Hey. The only real distinction, but we never. You're, yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah. Happy, You're happy with the. I've got a son in the You know, we're like out versus sit down. Yeah. Thank you. To meet the parking requirements for one hand. That's what it was calculated on. The last game. No, engineers are the reason we have our That one's easy. Seattle. New. Oh, yeah. <laughs> New. Hate, hate Manning. <laughs> That's because he beat you. I know. <laughs> well, we had a good time. People were good. They were very gregarious. And, yeah. That's what she said. And, uh, you know, you, you get to know people better that way. Uh, well, they can, they can propose a layout, but there's not. it's not necessarily set in stone. That Sarah, they can modify, and then we just look at parking. It's really about the function and the use on the site. And, you know, if it's 500 square feet versus 1,000, this is the only question around later. The idea is. I'll sit there and just you know, yeah. breathe on you. Oh, really? Parking. Oh. So if, yeah, if they clearly want to get a bigger nice restaurant and it requires more parking, yeah. then they'd have to come back for an event. You were about the blind dog. Is the rent differential really that much between North downtown? No, but it is. I didn't Because we, we had to so put them down. So we're still open. We have no. We're still filming. We're still filming. We're still live. I what that was like. Um, I had Dan and Dan's dog right next to me, and I was like, Sure. I mean, I was going to go through, since we're having sort of technical difficulties with the projection system, I don't know if I want to um, try moving over there. <laughs> but what I wanted to just um, go over really, this is, this is the zone, this is a subdivision rule. So, so in terms of subdivision, um, it's really about the street infrastructure when, and, and so um, state statute says you have to have these rules about how you build new streets. Um, and streets are, uh, as long as someone meets the cookbook of how to build a street, they get their subdivision. There's no, it's not like zoning where there's special permits you all can consider, you know, whether or not this fits in with the neighborhood and that kind of thing. If you meet the technical standards in this book, then you get your road. It's only when someone's asking for a waiver from the street standards that then there's some flexibility in terms of getting other things that you want to pre-define in this book. Um, but we've had, and over the years, we've modified the subdivision rules and narrowed the width of streets. They used to be, you know, 30-foot wide residential streets is what the standard was. Now mm -hmm. we've gotten down to 22-foot wide streets. The right-of-ways have pretty much still stayed the same. But, you know, and we've talked about thinking about um, alternative development patterns for all over the city, but also in the context of Village Hill and what do we want the streets to look like there. Maybe there's a system where we don't necessarily need separated sidewalks from the streets if they're, we're talking about low volumes and low speed traffic. Um, but that's not allowed in here, so nobody's going to do it unless it's spelled out about how you do it. So the idea behind revising the subdivision rules are creating standards so that when applicants come forward, they know that they're going to get an approval because they're doing it the way the book says that they can do it. And we want to encourage these new creative ways for stormwater management. It's better for the environment to have less pervious surface. And instead of building wide streets that then we have to come back later and do traffic calming on because people are driving way too fast, why not just build it the way we want it to begin with? Mm -hmm. So um, in some respects, you know, and we're working with DPW on this because obviously the city engineer has to be okay with these standards and the fact that we're making sort of a sea change in the way we allow street development. And we don't get a ton of subdivisions anyway. I mean, we went through this period, I guess, in the early 2000s where we got a ton of subdivisions. 
um, and that slowed down. Um, but now we're also potentially with infill um, allowances with the zoning, we might get we might want to encourage more sort of public streets or public alleys, but we need to have a standard for what those would look like because we want narrower streets in an urban context, but we also want to manage stormwater for those new systems. And how do you do both? You know, we don't want to just <clears throat> preserve all this big land for big detention ponds that are eyesores everywhere. So this sort of addresses that need too. Isn't it true there are fewer, one of the reasons there's fewer subdivisions is that people come in for cluster development instead, and that's a different set of rules? Um, yes, if they have the frontage, but any time you don't have frontage on a road, then you need to create frontage, and the way you create it is through a subdivision. Mm -hmm. The other thing I wanted to point out was that subdivision <coughs> rules is the only thing that we get to vote on and we don't have to submit it to city council. Those are our rules. Right. They're the planning them. board's rules by Which state statute. Scary. <laughs> <laughs> um, does DPW, have they weighed in um, or considered um, elimination of curbs as a well, way that's out? That's what this is. This is that's what's going to be included in these okay. rewrites. So the idea is to create a series of different t street types. Mm -hmm. uh, and a couple of them that we're proposing include. Um, streets with no curbs um, and and there we can get some green infrastructure so we get actual drain it or rain gardens or um, some new kind of infiltration right there at the street system mm -hmm. and then um, but it also could act as traffic calming so all of those mm -hmm. pieces are sort of a, all those things that we've been trying to get but don't have the rules for them we want to include that in here and so the, the big thing, as well as sort of incorporating those new ways of looking at street design, is to really change the way this looks and try to get a lot of, kind of what we did with zoning, try to get a lot of what we expect or a lot of the detailed um, design criteria in a table mm -hmm. um, so that you can sort of go through the matrix and say, okay, if I build this kind of street, here are all my requirements from width of street to width of right of way to, you know, landscaping or type of, green infrastructure, et cetera. So um, we almost had it ready to give you a draft just to look at, but I think maybe it's going to be two more weeks because I'm still trying to pull. And there are, bunches, there are a lot of cities around Massachusetts, not a lot in Massachusetts, but a couple and around the country that have design standards for this stuff. So we're not making it up um, to some extent. <laughs> but um, it's sort of, there are, it's sort of a, the next wave of, um, of revisions to development, I think, going across the country. So anyway, if, you, if you're OK with us moving forward, you, I know you can't see this, but this is the general direction that we're taking it. So it would be great if you, know, you think that's a good idea for us to do, because these will be your rules that you <laughs> enforce. Yeah. And of course, you're going to see them, and we're going to have lots of discussion about them. But I just, you know, we've taken a huge step towards that, and then our, I think We'll send you a draft. So the idea is we'd send you a draft, but at the same time, we'd sit down with DPW and say, are we in the right direction or are we way off of the deep end? So in two weeks, you think you'd have a Yeah, maybe in a couple days. I mean, I'm, I was almost there for today, but. Okay. Um, Do we have anything else in two weeks? You might have one minor permit, nothing major that I can think of. OK. I haven't done the legal ad yet. So. Caroline. This, as an example, we were discussing last time um, the corner down there where the motel is and the possibility of putting up five condo, I mean, five townhouses or whatever it was down there on Bridge, uh, on Bridge Street. Oh, right, right, right. Shaw's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're Shaw's. talking about the internals of that. Yeah. That's part of what you're discussing well here. not oh, for a small not, that small not for a small site like that because okay. there's that's corner frontage so this is anywhere where you're really creating a new street a, like a new grid or Garden a new way or yeah. sovereign right. way or, or at village hill instead of getting Got it. you know yeah. these big new wide streets maybe the north end would be mm -hmm. you know the part that's not built out now maybe that could come in under this new um, sort of narrower street and with less infrastructure, that kind of thing. So, or it could be in pockets of downtown where there's, you know, multi five, ten acres or something. Or mm -hmm. we talked about the Lyman Estate. Mm -hmm. You know, this might be a good mm -hmm. place to think about that because we 
probably would get some new street infrastructure on that huge parcel. And, but we want to be ready with something that's not going to demand, you know, massive amounts of concrete right. um, just for the sake of meeting the subdivision requirements right. that may be outdated. Okay. Okay. So That's you all just I need have. a nod from us to yeah. keep going. Are you guys okay with it? Nods. Everybody's nodding. Okay. All right. So nodding. we'll keep moving ahead. Yes. Yeah. There's always a chance for you to say no. This is wrong. Go back to the old. I move for adjournment. Uh, meeting minutes. We already did that. Did that. Great. You were 90 <laughs> seconds late. See, be a few minutes late. Yeah. <laughs> So we got a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? I get it. A few minutes. We're adjourned. <laughs>